So I want to then take a look at the soft tissues around the lumbosacral spine because this can be a cause of sciatica. And remember again, it wasn't until in the 1930s that disc herniations were then proven to be an etiology for sciatica. And now we're kind of at the same place to try to see if we can understand how sciatica can actually be a result of extraspinal disease. And so here we have the four, five, S1, two, and three roots that come together to form the sciatic nerve. And you can see how they traverse between the muscles at the notch, of which the piriformis muscle is one of the largest. And so you can imagine that with compression, um, from contraction of these soft tissue structures, you might compress the nerve or you might distort it so that it can be up against unyielding structures such as the ischial spine. So we looked at these patients with MR imaging and found that there are abnormalities that we might actually see in the nerve itself that could help pinpoint this to be the area of concern. And here we can see MR images in the axial and coronal plane that are T2 weighted with fat saturation. And here we are at the level of the notch. And on the left side in this patient with left-sided sciatica, the nerve is bigger and brighter. And here we can see that also on the coronal plane after it exits from the notch beneath the piriformis muscle compared to the normal right side. So there are MR findings that are going to correlate with extraspinal sciatica. And these patients then uh, came to us for not only diagnosis, but for potential treatment. And so we looked at a group of patients with abnormal um, MR findings um, and underwent sciatic nerve blocks, which really is kind of a novel way to treat this. The abnormalities that were seen in these patients included abnormal signal as well as a trend for abnormal size and they underwent injection under CT guidance. Here in the supine plane, we have the um, acetabulum, and here's the sciatic nerve as it's ventral to the piriformis muscle, and then injection into the perineural tissues of anesthetic and steroid. And so a um, great majority of them had immediate relief, and this is very helpful in terms of diagnosis, even more sensitive than electrodiagnostic studies for identifying um, a correlate to the patient's symptomatology. And in those patients who had abnormalities on MR as well as abnormalities in terms of the injection and positive response with pain reduction with sciatic nerve block, they had a favorable outcome with surgical decompression compared to those patients who had no abnormalities on MR or no response to the injection. Those patients tended to have an unfavorable response with no symptomatic relief with surgical decompression. And here is an intraoperative view showing the fibrous band that can compress the sciatic nerve as it traverses through the notch just to give us an idea of, of what it looks like interoperatively. 